What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And my whole channel is meant to help you out with your mental health. I talk about a variety of mental health topics, as well as some addiction stuff. So if that's something that you would like help with, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. But the reason we are here today is because Logan Paul has just released a video, uh, the first one he's released in a while since the whole Japanese suicide forest thing happened. If you want, check out the info card. I've done two videos on the Logan Paul situation already, talking about suicide, talking about apologizing, and whether or not we should forgive, and all that kind of stuff. So, since he just released this video, I figured, hey, why don't I uh, dip, dip my toe into the whole uh, reaction genre? So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna watch this video together, and uh, yeah, I'll share my thoughts, and we'll see, we'll see what he's doing. All right, let's jump into this thing. All right, let's see. About eight hundred thousand people worldwide die by suicide every year. One person every forty seconds takes their own life. Dang. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff I focus on is national, you know, in the United States. So like seeing that on a global level, that's nuts. For 40 minutes, crying like a baby. Bikers, joggers, tourists, runners, they went by me. Police officers searching for suicidal people went by me twice. <laughs> I'm standing at the ledge, leaning over the rail with tears flowing down to the waters. And I thought to myself, absolutely nobody cares. And then the voice in my head said, jump now, and I did. This is, this is crazy. So, so what it looks like, it looks like Logan's interviewing somebody in San Francisco who was about to commit suicide. And yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge is like one of the biggest um, areas for people to commit suicide here in the United States. And like, just my, my first initial reaction, like I'm really glad that uh, Logan went out and he's interviewing people. I don't know how much more of that will be in this video, but like that's that's when this thing really starts to hit you. Like um, I've done some videos on empathy and things like that. And I work at a drug and alcohol treatment center and you know, there's, a, there's not that much empathy for drug addicts and alcoholics out there, but when you sit down and you get to know these people, when you actually talk to these people who are going through something and the amount of like trauma, you know, people endured in their childhoods and things like that. Like you just can't help for, but feel for them. And like right now I give props to Logan for like going down and sitting with people, whether, you know, and some people are probably going to be like, Oh, it's just for publicity. But like, he's actually developing some really empathetic skills just by sitting there and listening to these stories. So good for you so far, Logan Paul. Let's see what this says. Suicide is the second leading cause of, a, of death among young people. Yeah, yeah. And the millisecond that my hands cleared the rail and my legs flew over it was an instant regret. The depression was wiped from my mind and all I wanted to do was live. And I thought it's too late. Mm. Kevin Hines was 19 when he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. He is one of the many incredible people that I've been grateful to meet over the past three weeks as I aim to further understand the complexity surrounding suicide. Man, man, good for, good for, good for you, Logan Paul. And yeah, and that's the thing too, 19 years old and like, and yeah, man, like if you, if you watch the news and stuff like that, like it's so many young people, so many young people, like being a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery, like I was at the point when I was ready to die. You know, that's that's one of the reasons I make this channel. Like I wanna give people hope that things do get better. And like, I was struggling with suicidal thoughts a ton in high school and like, it's so hard to talk to young people and explain to them like, things are gonna get better. And recently in the news, it's been just so sad. There's there's kids in elementary school, like elementary school, who are taking their own life because of bullying. Like, it's it's brutal. But um, yeah, let's see, let's see who else Logan's talking to. I've made mistakes. I know I've let people down. But what happens when you're given an opportunity to help make a difference in the world? The backlash against the social media star. A very popular guy called Logan Paul is in some hot I think water. He's a complete and utter insensitive idiot. He's taking a break from daily blogging. Even he says his latest content was his biggest mistake. I want to apologize to the victim and his family. 
It's time to learn from the past as they get better and grow as a human being. All right, so like, so here's the thing. I know for a fact Logan's gonna get backlash. There's gonna be backlash, right? And like, here's, I've done a video, like especially with all the um, scandals in Hollywood and stuff like that. And, you know, I come from this place of like, should people be forgiven? And obviously there's, there's different, there's a whole spectrum of terrible things people do. But, you know, People are gonna say, oh, he just did this because of all the backlash and da 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 da. And it's like, who cares? If that's if that's what it took, if if a colossal screw up is what it took to set the wheels in motion for him to become a better person and to use his YouTube platform to help more people, like that's that's great. Like I'd rather I I will gladly take a few steps back for a hundred steps forward. Like like think about it, just think about it for a second. Before you start going crazy on Logan Paul, think about it. People were upset because most of his audience is young people. Now that he's developing this empathetic point of view to the struggles that young people are actually facing, what time's gonna tell. Let's see how much of his future content is based around purely helping young people who are struggling, all right? like. I don't know, that's just my point of view on it. Like, you can hate on him all you want, but like, if one screw up makes this guy a better person for the rest of his life, and he's he's like in his 20s, like, awesome, awesome. I'm here to have a hard conversation so that those who are suffering can have easier ones. So I've never been so humbled in my life by a oh, single wow. event. Were you kind of shocked by it? What? This dude, this dude's talking to Bob Forrest? That's the dude from Intervention. I haven't watched Intervention in years. I don't know if he's still on it, but good for you. Good for you, but I don't know. Bob's kind of cool. He's kind of cool, but yeah. And where does he work? Alo House Recovery Centers? Hmm. Oh, I think he started his own thing. Good for you, Bob. I was shocked to discover just how big this is. You've never known anybody that killed himself? No one. No, and that was that was that was part of the problem. It's just my ignorance on the subject. But in Ohio, where you come from, it's the second leading cause of death. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Logan Paul is from Ohio. Ohio is okay. So second leading cause of death, suicide. I would I I would think I assume the leading cause of death is heroin overdoses. Like Ohio has been getting hit hard with the heroin epidemic or opioid epidemic. Like I did another video on that documentary they did, uh, Seven Days in Heroin, uh, Seven Days of Heroin. Like, how did Logan not know like what's going on in his home state? Like, man, Ohio is hurting right now. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad Bob called him out on that. Like, like really, man, really? And I know while I'm not able to solve the problem by myself, I want to be a part of the solution. And that solution began across the country in New York City. I miss New York City. I miss it. We sat down with Dr. John Draper, director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. We have to change the conversation publicly from just focusing on suicide and how something bad is happening. First off, I like I like how, you know, Logan went here and like even this organization, like they're not going to hate on him. Like when you like, you know, there's all this backlash and stuff like that. And we, we live in a, in a world where people are just like burn them at the stake. Right. And like the average person just doesn't like forgiving people like we are living in a world where people are offended and they just they freak out and stuff but like when you when you meet mental health professionals like this guy who runs uh the national suicide prevention hotline like they're like yeah logan come on in like let's talk about this you know um which is super cool and say well, what what do we do about it? help people understand that the first thing they need to do is reach out and talk to somebody when they're feeling in despair. Because you're not alone with it anymore. They, they, they've done studies with people who are, who are experiencing any kind of pain, including hanging off a cliff. You can hold on a lot longer if somebody is right there with you. Yeah, and if anybody out there is watching, and by the way, I'm gonna be putting links to all the um, suicide prevention hotline and text line and stuff down there, but like, that's the thing. And, uh, you know, of course I deal with drug addicts and alcoholics, but I also deal with people who are depressed. I've had people in my life uh, who are clients as well as uh, other people I know who have committed suicide. And like, it, all of this is just about vocalizing it and reaching out for help. Like, I've done videos like, 
just if you're somebody out there watching this who's struggling, there are tons, thousands of just Facebook support groups. I'm gonna do some videos on some apps. There's even apps that you can go on completely anonymous and they're just support systems. Like one of the best things, one of the most therapeutic things any of us can have is knowing that we're not the only ones struggling. Like just that sigh of relief, like, oh, oh my God, I'm not the only one who thinks like this. I'm not the only one who's going through stuff like this. Like just that alone is amazing. But obviously when you can get on the line with a, a you know somebody at the suicide prevention hotline, these are people who are trained to kind of talk you off that ledge. I think as a society, as human beings, uh, we just have to be more compassionate. And that includes me too. That's something I'm learning along this journey. And something else that Dr. Draper told me were the five steps that anyone can take to help prevent suicide. Step one is simply just ask. Ask yourself, ask others, are you thinking about suicide? And I know that sounds like a daunting question, but literally that question can save lives. And step two, accordingly, would be just to listen. Be present, don't make any judgments. And then step three. Yeah, so, so step one, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. And this is me being somebody who deals, uh, who works in the mental health field. Like, obviously, like, my clients and stuff like that. But, like, I don't know. I can see how people could be a little leery about that question. Like, if, if like, say your, your friend, your friend, like, just got broken up with, like, the first question, like, you ask him is, like, or even not the first question, like, yo, are you, are you thinking about suicide? Like, that seems like a little bit much, but the second one, listen, listen, I, I have been meaning to, and I'm going to write a note down right now. I've been meaning to, we have this idea in our head as people that we need to fix people or we need to provide them with a solution. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you're watching this and you have friends who are struggling, whether it's a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, a child, a friend, whoever it is. 90% of helping them is just shutting your mouth and listening. Like, I can't tell you how beneficial that was for me with my depression was just having people who would listen. I wasn't looking for answers. I wasn't looking for them to solve it. A great example is when people are dealing with grief. Like, if you've ever lost somebody, you know when you're in that that grieving state, there's literally nothing anybody can say that will make you feel better. Most of the time, we just need somebody there who is going to listen. So please keep that in your mind. Would be be there for them, even after you've already asked, because dependability is key. Step yeah. Four. So, man, I need to I need to make more videos on this. Be there, big one. So as somebody with depression and somebody who's dealt with grief, my, my advice for you when it says be there is follow up, follow up. Like we live in an amazing time. We live in 2018, all of us have one of these things, okay? Whenever one of my friends is struggling or having a hard time, I set a reminder, okay? Listen, listen to me. I set a reminder in my phone to follow up with them the next day or two days or three days, whatever it is, the next week while they're going through this. Because what happens is, is you hit them on that initial time, like, hey, is there anything I can do for you? Is there any way I can help? Do you want to talk? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to, right? And they might just want to be alone. And then you just completely forget about it and say, oh no, they said they wanted to be alone. Well, the way depression works or any type of uh, just emotional or mental struggle, one minute we want to be alone and the next minute we need people there for us. So, <coughs> excuse me. Set reminders on your phone to follow up with that person at least once a day because you never know when it's gonna change. And from the perspective of somebody who's been on the depressed end, like it would really, it would make my depression worse. Even though part of my logical brain knew that people cared because they reached out to me at first, the fact that they didn't reach out again made me even more depressed. So when, when he says be there, like follow up with people, realize that this thing, it, it kind of flows and it changes. It has its ups and downs from I wanna, I wanna be alone to I need people around me. Four is then help them connect. Uh, whether it's with a friend, a family member, a local suicide hotline therapist, but help them reach out to someone so they don't have to deal with this alone. Yeah, so so have options, and I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that Logan's talking about this. Like everybody should know this stuff. Everybody should know this stuff. But anyways, like again, live in 2018. Google it. You know what I mean? 
Um, uh, you know, this isn't just a shameless plug, but subscribe to my channel because all I do, half the things I do on this on this channel is provide people with resources. I've done another video about like three ways to go to rehab if you don't have insurance. You know what I mean? Like get educated about this stuff. So that way you can provide some people with real solutions. Like I think a lot of us have this gigantic ego and I don't know where it comes from where we think we can solve everything. Like I just did a video about Nicole Arbor um, shaming people with depression the other day. Like, we gotta realize like, we don't always have all the answers and that's okay. Find the answers and, and have the ability to help people out. Like, have you talked to a therapist? Like, if any of you need therapy, there's a link in my description for very cheap, affordable online therapy, okay? But have numbers for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline and text line. I have clients who call me and text me, and when they are suicidal, the f like, one after I talk to them a little bit, I shoot them over that information. Know these resources. Know them. Um, another website that that I will link in the description is the Sam Show website. It is uh, it's here in the United States, but what that is, it will point you out to um, local uh, mental health care professionals in your area, and it will help you categorize it on whether you have insurance or no insurance or Medicare or Meta, you know, any of that stuff. So be familiar with these things so you can guide people in the right direction. Like, it's okay if you don't have the answers, find the answers and provide them for them. Lastly, step five is just check in on them, show them that you care, uh, call them up, say, hey, I wanna make sure you're okay. Oh, look, me and Logan on the same page. We on the same page, yeah, check in, follow up. Okay, can I check in with you over the next few days? So one of the things that is so important about reducing stigma is getting stories out there about people positively coping with suicide. Do you guys know anyone I could talk to with the lived experience of suicide? Ab absolutely. We by the way, like I was literally just talking to a friend about this. Like those of you who are are going through my channel or check out my channel, that's why I bring so many different people on my channel. This isn't just the Chris show. I I try to bring a lot of people onto my channel and I'm working on getting even more who have gone through this stuff and succeeded, okay? Because I'm just one person and you might not be able to connect with me. That's why I get men and women um, of different ages and backgrounds and different experiences to come on my channel and share their experience with you. Um, once you see somebody else has done it, it starts to give you a little bit of hope. You have quite a number of people that, that we could, we could oh, refer over to, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And that's how we got introduced to Kevin Hines. 17 years ago, Kevin jumped off of the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. These are individuals whose stories, when people hear them, they say, you know, maybe I can get through. As opposed to hearing stories when people haven't. And, and those are, unfortunately, those are stories that we've heard before. Now we're right? Right? Like, those are the stories we hear about. Like, that's one of the reasons. And it, it's part of the, the way our world works. Um, you know, like, people go to NASCAR to see the crashes. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the reason, like, in my, my son, here's, here's just a fun story about a child. My son, he asked me, he's like, Daddy, why does the news always show the negative stuff? And I'm like, well... Unfortunately, that's what people want to watch. That's what people want to hear. Like, we need to start promoting these good stories of, of hope. You know what I mean? Like, we have to do it. Like, there are, um, I'll, I'll give you a prime example. I, I monitor, I watch, I analyze human behavior and mental health and stuff. People on my Facebook, just my normal Facebook um, friends and stuff, they are a hundred times more likely to share stories about the negative than they are about the positive. We are becoming the news. We are the people promoting negativity. Like, we need more people out there sharing videos of hope. We're hearing more and more stories of people being more open about it. As I was saying before, Logan, for every one person that dies by suicide, there's 287 other people that think seriously about it but don't. Those are stories, mm -hmm. again, that have not been told. If we told those stories of people who got through it as opposed to one who didn't, imagine what kind of influence that would have on people's behavior. When I found out that one in six high school kids seriously think about suicide, that's, that's stunning. Yeah. This is such a common problem. Logan, all I wanted was for one person to look me in my eyes and say, hey, kid, are you okay? I am so grateful to be alive. Like, man, 
I, I can relate. Like, we as as humans, like, um, I did a video about this. Um, it's called, like, Dear YouTubers, Nobody Care About You, but uh, I dove into the neuroscience of it. By nature, we are very selfish human beings. First and foremost, we care about ourselves. Boom. Okay? We care about our wants, our needs, you know, what we can get rather than give and all these other things. Then it kind of branches out to our children, our spouse, our immediate family and things like that. And we just walk past each other all day, every day. And like what he just said, like this was something that made, that fueled my depression. Like nobody would ever ask me if I was okay. You know, I'm the son of an alcoholic mom. My dad was constantly working or out at the bar and partying. Like, I was alone a lot. And, like, people never asked me, like, Chris, are you okay? Like, how are you coping? I, I make it a point. I make it a point now, and I teach my clients at my rehab center to do this all the time. Like, if you see somebody over in the corner sitting by themselves, looking alone, looking sad, just go over and ask them how they're doing. Ask them if they want to talk. Sit there and talk. Like, like this guy just said. Like, just just a gesture like that can change somebody's entire life. Like, you have no idea. So just just think about that. And I know we live in this world where like, oh, I don't want to talk to strangers, and oh, is this weird? It's all based on your own insecurities and being self conscious. Like, if somebody thinks you're weird for asking them how they're doing, then. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather ask a hundred people how they're doing and potentially save one life than, than, you know, be worried about like whether or not I look weird or goofy. Like just ask people how they're doing. Check in with your friends every now and then. Like you don't need some kind of crazy disaster to happen just to ask people how they're doing. You know, like it makes a world of difference to show people that you care, care. That's it. It's real simple. And I'm grateful today for every millisecond I get to breathe. Because it was almost all ripped from me by me. What's one thing you would have said to your younger self? To the Kevin who was 19, sitting on the bus, if you were next to you, and instead of the guy who pointed and laughed, what would you say? I would just put my hand on the sh... <laughs> mm, you gotta get me teary-eyed. I would put my hand on my shoulder. And I would just say, I'm here for you. I got you. We need to be a society that comes together for every person in the community that's going through hell. And in order to do that, every person that's going through hell, whatever hell, has to be honest about their pain. Mm, preach. And if they're gonna be honest about their pain, we are going to collectively answer the call and be there for that individual. Because if you don't see beauty in the next person you meet, you're not looking hard enough. Mmm. Dang. You're incredible. All right. I don't I don't know who this dude is, but damn. Damn. I need to I need to link up with this guy. Like, that was truth. I paused it on a weird way his face looks, but anyways, let's go. Dude, this is an honor for me. It's an honor for me too, bro. From this point on, I want to make an effort to contribute and immerse myself in the conversation. So I'm pledging to donate one million dollars to various suicide prevention organizations. Ooh! With Wait, what? Logan just say one mil? Get it? Get it? So yeah, like this is huge. And I was I was actually just talking to my girlfriend about this. Okay, now I'm not delusional. I'm not crazy. I know I'm never gonna hit Logan Paul levels of YouTube stardom, but I sit here. And I watch a bunch of big YouTubers. I watch a bunch of big YouTubers. And for example, once Logan Paul's um, whole uh, suicide forest thing came out, a bunch of other YouTubers, they did great things. Like, by the way, don't get me wrong, I'm not ungrateful. But they, they did these like donations and people were donating to the suicide prevention and stuff like that. And like, here's the thing. Like, if I, like if I personally ever get to that, like any kind of level, like any level, once I get to a level where people actually care what the hell it is I have to say, um, like why don't we do this once a month? Like why don't we do charity live streams? Why aren't we doing this to donate to different organizations? Like imagine if every big YouTuber with thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, if once a month, just once a month, they did a live stream 
like a Q&A or Jacksepticeye did playing video games, whatever that is, if they did it once a month and people people were just pledging a dollar, two dollars, whatever, whatever it is, fifty dollars. If we did that every month, like think about the impact we would have on this world. Like think about that. Like kudos to you, Logan Paul, and I can't wait to see what you do in the future, my man. But like, I hope this isn't just a okay. I there's my million, and I'm never talking about this again. I, I made my apology. Like, I hope we see this is something new, it's something regular. But my message to every other YouTuber out there is like, do this stuff more often. Don't wait. Don't wait. Like, we don't need tragedy to happen. I've talked about this in other videos. When, uh, for those of you who don't know, I live in Las Vegas, and when um, the the shooting happened, uh, all these people, and uh, even though I love me some Philip DeFranco, they're like. See, that was the time, and he just said this the other day um, about the school shooting in Kentucky. They're like, now is the time to tell people you love them because you never know when they're going to be there. And I'm like, screw that. Do it every day. Like, don't wait for tragedy to strike. Tell people you love them every day. Show people you care about them every day. Don't wait for tragedy. We are, we, our society is, we, we react rather than being uh, proactive about this stuff. So, like, if any huge YouTuber stumbles across this, like, like think about how easy that is. Hop on a live stream once a month. Set up a, a you know your uh, your super chat. Set up a GoFundMe or whatever. Just once a month, get some money to these organizations. But good job, Logan Paul. Sorry for that little rant right there. The first two hundred fifty thousand dollars is going immediately to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, so they can increase their capacity to help those in need. For anyone watching, I want you to know you are not alone. And most of the time, crisis passes. So if you or anyone you know feels alone or trapped, I encourage anyone to call or even text the suicide or crisis hotline. Both of those numbers are below, and although this is a tough conversation, it's important because things can and will get better. It's time to start a new chapter in my life as I continue to educate both myself and others on suicide. I'm humbled and thankful to say, this is just the beginning. All right, Logan. All right, Logan, let's see. Let's see, and hey, all you all you haters out there, by the way, I'm not, no, I'm not part of the low gang. All you haters out there, he didn't plug his merch once. I know you're all waiting for it. Well, there's like 10 seconds left in this video. Maybe, maybe he will. All right, let's have some fun. Let's see if he does. Hold on. Okay, suicide prevention lifeline. All right, cool, cool, cool. No merch. No merch. All right, here. I'm going to rewind it, and I'm going to leave that number up. Okay, everybody. So, yeah, good good for you. Good for you, Logan Logan Paul. Good for you. But like I said, let's see. Let's see. And I said this. I said this in my last video about when he made the apology. Like, let's see what this dude actually does. Like, give him some time. Like, people were, like, flipping out. Like, he made an apology video. And within five minutes, people were like, I don't accept that apology. Like, bruh. Give him a minute. Give him like a minute to try to do something about it. Like, like you're not even giving them an opportunity. So, so, but now the eyes are on you, Logan Paul. Like, hey, listen, my man, I'm gonna do a follow up video on you. I'm gonna be watching you. Okay, I want to make sure that you keep you keep what you say. You you're gonna keep doing this stuff, all right? Because mental health is huge. And guys like Logan Paul, like I'm glad he made this video. I'm glad millions and millions of his fans are gonna see it. I'm glad that a bunch of people are gonna do videos like the one I'm doing right now. Like let's spread the word, okay? But anyways, if you if you're watching, if you're still here, like kudos to you here's what i'll do here's what i'll do too for anytime i do one of these long videos i like to give you something a little free so um so i have an addiction course on the rewired soul.com if you would like to learn about the science of addiction that course is usually a hundred dollars use coupon code it's free and you could take the course for free because i just want to educate people okay Coupon code is it's free, I T S F R E E. Okay? All right. So spread the message, share Logan's video, hell, share my video. But, anyways, thank you so much for spending this time with me as we went through this. Um, I got some, uh, I got a subscribe thing over, wait, I'm trying to look at my video. It's over that way. Okay. So, subscribe to my channel if you like help with your mental and emotional health. Right below uh, the suicide prevention line, you'll see some thumbnails if you want to check out some other videos on my channel. So, anyways. Thank you, Logan Paul. Spread the message of hope. And thank you all out there for watching. I'll see you next time.